All right, so our repair starts by turning off the water under the sink. Okay. All right, we want to rebuild this control unit, but before we do anything, I always like to put a rag right there so the parts don't go down the drain. I want to start by taking off this index. Okay, it's red and blue and it covers up a little set screw underneath. And I want to pry that out. Now underneath it, there is an Allen screw right here which holds the handle on. Now in the kit, there's a special tool that has an Allen wrench on this end. So I'm going to loosen that. Now the handle comes off. Now underneath you can see there's a ball assembly right here. And this tool also has a spanner wrench that will allow me to loosen some of the tension. And once I do, I should be able to back this top cap assembly off. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the entire ball and the water that's in the spout will, have, will settle down. Thank goodness I have that rag there, huh? Perfect planning. All right, so let's pull this up and we see the heart of the faucet is this, this ball. Now the ball sits down against these seats at the bottom. See the two black things right mm -hmm, there? Yeah. The one on the left is hot, the one on the right is cold, and there's full water pressure coming up there. Now when the handle is full forward, this ball seals against those rubber seats and the water's off. But now if we pull the handle back, look what happens. The two openings line up with the two seats at the bottom, so hot and cold mix come out through here and goes out through the spout. When we go, now go to the left, we'll just get hot. Go to the right, we just get cold. Now this is stainless steel. This generally is not a part that wears out and it looks pretty good. The part that usually wears is right down here, the seats. Let me just pull them out and see how they are. All right, so look at this. You see that score mark right there? Mm -hmm. Another one right there. So those little nicks caused our leak? That's enough. This is full city water pressure, so you have to make sure it's absolutely tight. Huh? All right, so that was bad. Let's see what the other one looks like. That one's pretty worn, too. All right, so here's our two worn seats right here. Here's the two new ones. There's also a couple of springs, and these springs are really important. The springs sit underneath the seats, and they're going to provide the correct tension so that you have a nice tight seal against the full city water pressure that's coming through that seat. Mm -hmm. Now you see, if that was all frayed like yours was, that's why you get the leak through the spout. Right. Now the best tool for getting this seat and spring into the faucet itself is a number two pencil. And that'll help me guide it right down into place. Okay, there's one. All right, so our seats are in place. Now we need to install the ball. You can see on the side of the ball, there's a little keyway. Mm -hmm. And look inside the fuss. See the little tab on the side? Yep, I see that. That actually lines up right here. And that will make sure the ball is oriented correctly in relation to those hot and cold seats. Now, we want to make sure we also don't have any water coming up through the faucet. So out of the kit, I have a new cam assembly. That has a gasket right here that goes over the top of that ball and also this cam cap right here. Now you'll notice here there's a keyway. You see on the side right here there's another little keyway and that goes in. So once that's in place, look what it does. It actually limits how far that can travel. So the handle can be off, hot, cold, or off. Nice. Alright, so now that is essentially done. Now we just have to put the chrome cap assembly over the top. And as I do, it'll help tension that gasket onto the top of that ball. Perfect. I like to go hand tight, as tight as I can, and not use pliers to scratch it up. So good. So now I'm going to turn the water back on. Okay. Using the same tool that came in the kit, I can actually adjust the amount of tension that's on the handle. You can see right here there's a couple of notches, and this is the gland nut that I can tighten up, turn it clockwise, and that'll provide more tension down against the ball And there you go. Okay. That feels pretty good. You want it to have a little bit of tension. You don't want it to be sloppy. All right. Now with that on, that's holding. We just have to reverse the procedure. Put the handle back on. Tighten the Allen screw. 
pop in the index. Give it a try. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, I hope it works. The way it should be. You did it. We're out of here. See ya. <laughs> Good job. Thanks for your help. You fix one little drip and you got yourself a happy home. Absolutely. So it seems to me that the key to this repair is finding just the right parts for exactly the faucet yeah, you have. Yeah. Is that easy to do? Well, that's a name brand manufacturer. And even though they have a ton of different styles of faucet, the basic part inside that shuts the water on and off is the same across the line. So this is the same manufacturer. And this is one of the most popular faucets in the history of American plumbing. Millions and millions of these. Mm -hmm. And if you look underneath here, what do you see? Well, this faucet doesn't look anything like her faucet, right. so, but you're telling me that inside, oh yeah, there's, there's the stainless the same steel ball. ball. There's the seats and springs. Wow, so if you've got this box, you're in pretty good shape. And you can keep rebuilding that faucet and keep it alive for a long time. That's awesome. But those are wear parts that'll wear out over time, those rubber seats down at the bottom. This is the same manufacturer, and now they're moving into a new technology called ceramic disc. So if I look underneath here, what do you not see? Well, I don't see that stainless steel ball. Okay, no more ball, now it's a cartridge. And what's inside the cartridge is really cool. You can see right here, there are two pieces of ceramic right here. Mm -hmm. And they are milled together so beautifully that they almost stick and stay wow. attracted to each other. So now, do you remember inside that ball, we had the hot and the cold holes right there? Yep. And it would mix into the faucet right here. So if I look underneath, now with the faucet handle shut, you see how those holes are blocked off? No water. Now when I move the handle both Hot a little cold, bit, yeah. both come in. When I go to one side, go oh. to the other side. And this just moves back and forth, back and forth. And, and so what's the idea? That the ceramic is not going to leak? It's going to hold up a lot longer than the rubber gaskets? That's right. The, actually, the more you use this, the more it actually hones these surfaces and makes a nice tight seal. So no rubber gaskets in this cartridge that could ever fail? Well, the only rubber is actually at the bottom of this gasket. And it's going to sit down at the bottom, but it doesn't move. It's just going to sit in one place so it shouldn't wear out. Right. And the more you use this, the more it'll last. It should last a long time. So hopefully no leaks. But if yeah. you do have a leak, can I still go buy one of those boxes of all the different parts? Well, you wouldn't need a lot of little parts. Now you would just go out and get this whole cartridge, turn the water off, pull the old one out, put the new one in, be done with it. Beautiful. Great fix, good information. Right. Thank you, Richard. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Thury. For Ask This Old House. So really 3,000 gallons of water from that one little drink? One second at a time. That's unbelievable.